interest in worry here. All right, uh, Britt, I just want to update you while you've been talking. Authorities at the Somerset County Airport confirm a large plane crash about 80 miles southeast of Pittsburgh. We're trying to deal with only facts today and not rumors because there are plenty of those swirling around, but we do have a confirmation of apparently another plane crash about 80 miles southeast of Pittsburgh. You've got to assume that it's related to all of these goings on, but uh, we don't know any more information than that. Rick Leventhal, we are glad uh, to know, is still with us uh, in Lower Manhattan. Rick? Yeah, John, um, we just, we, we basically ran about five blocks down Church Street uh, north, away from the World Trade Center, uh, as that second tower was collapsing. Uh, a similar scene to the first one, where huge clouds of smoke began, began billowing down the street at us. Uh, and in fact, because of the location of the tower, it actually came down cross streets. So as we were running north on church, we were passing cross streets, and the, the black clouds of debris and smoke were, were coming towards us down the side streets as well. So we were about five blocks, uh, we're about Got five, that. six blocks north of where we were before. Things have settled down a bit now. The, the, the smoke is starting to clear. Um, we've seen more injured coming our way, and there's a lot of uh, police activity on the street. Um, but a similar scene to what we saw earlier as the first tower collapsed, uh, only this time uh, people were ready for it or more ready for it and uh, reacted swiftly. John? All right, uh, Rick Leventhal, thanks very much. Again, there is so much going on. It's difficult to update you, but you're looking at the cloud of dust, debris, smoke, and probably cum uh, crumbled concrete over lower Manhattan, the twin towers of the World Trade Center are essentially gone. 110 stories each, more or less. They are gone now. All of this taking place within the last two hours after they were struck um, by uh, two airplanes. American Airlines is now confirming that its Flight 11 from Boston to Los Angeles was hijacked and apparently one of the, uh, that plane was one of the two uh, that slammed into one of the World Trade Center towers. Uh, we don't know anything more about the loss of life, but it is going to be considerable. David Schuster is with us now, again, uh, not far from the Pentagon. David? Well, John, I'm actually inside the Pentagon in our office at the Outer Ring, and again, we can confirm for you that intelligence sources are telling us that it was a U.S. Air 737 uh, that crashed into the south end of the Pentagon at approximately 9.40 this morning. The Pentagon has been evacuated, but we do want to point out that at parts of the Pentagon, key personnel are still here, including the National uh, Military Command Center. This is in the basement of the Pentagon, and an extreme, uh, sort of a bunker type of a facility that uh, is essentially designed to withstand direct uh, attacks on the Pentagon. And uh, we're told that officials there uh, are still in that particular part of the Pentagon are coordinating any possible U.S. response, as well as trying to gather intelligence information, counterintelligence information, and essentially act as a clearinghouse from all the various intelligence agencies in Washington. Uh, there have been reports of uh, cautions, precautions being taken at the Central Intelligence Agency in McLean, Virginia, at the National Security Agency. But again, here at the Pentagon, while most of the Pentagon and its uh, 23,000 employees have been evacuated, the National Military Command Center at the base of the Pentagon is still here. Uh, you can actually smell the smoke now in uh, virtually all of the hallways at the Pentagon uh, and uh, fire trucks and sirens going off on the south side. But where we are on the northern side of the Pentagon and one of the outer rings, uh, my producer Chris Wright says he could not feel any of the aftershocks of the Pentagon of the explosion. There was no uh, uh, noise when the uh, uh, plane apparently crashed this morning at 940. Um, but again, uh, most of the Pentagon has been cleared out. The smoke uh, pretty thick here in the halls. Um, but uh, some officials, of course, still at the Pentagon in the offices that are designed uh, for some of these uh, very uh, scenarios. John? All right, David Schuster at the Pentagon. Thanks very much. Uh, it appears, and we had the report from our Brian Wilson in Washington not too long ago, it appears Brian told us that, the, uh, that there was a report of a hijacked plane south of Washington, D.C. and headed toward the nation's capital. Now, it appears that that is the flight that went down about 80 miles southeast of Pittsburgh. We told you that there was a confirmation from the Somerset uh, County Airport. Uh, authorities are saying that uh, that may be the plane that Brian Wilson spoke of. Um, let's take you back again to New York and an absolutely horrific scene in lower Manhattan. The entire lower end of the island covered 
in smoke and, f and floating debris. And what's missing? The Twin Towers of the World Trade Center, 110 stories high. You are looking at the pictures uh, from, oh, the last half hour or so as the first tower simply collapsed on itself. This, and look at the debris raining down on other buildings. Imagine the horror. Uh, now, here comes the second tower. This is the one that had the TV antenna on top simply imploding on itself. 110 stories, the uh, workplace of some 50,000 people. America, the uh, loss of life here is going to be tremendous. Molly Falconer is at one of the New York area hospitals. Uh, Molly, it's got to be a scene of absolute chaos there. Uh, John, this is an area under siege. Uh, the police have blocked off a block radius around one of the main hospitals here in New York, and paramedics are coming out onto the street asking people in the crowd yes. to give blood. I'm sorry, the phone lines are going in and out, but they're asking people in the crowd to give blood to the people who are coming into this hospital. There are stretchers out on the streets on dollies draped in white sheets waiting for the injured to come in. I've seen ambulance after ambulance ferrying people into this hospital. It is a scene of utter chaos. The police have locked down this block. They're trying to keep people away, but people are standing at the barricade trying to find out who's inside this hospital. Uh, as far as we know, most of the burn victims are going up to Cornell Hospital. Some are going to Bellevue, but the majority are going here to St. Vincent's Hospital because they have a trauma one level center here that is to take care of the worst of the victims who are coming in. Sirens uh, just keep going by, and the calls are just getting heavier. Most of the people here can also see the World Trade Center, both of the towers. We heard the crowds watch them come down. People are in tears. They shouted watching the second tower come down. And now all we can see is way downtown billows of black and gray smoke while the sirens here just keep coming into the hospital. John, we'll keep you up to date. All right, Molly Falconer. Thanks very much. And that is perhaps something that you can do if you are watching our coverage anywhere in America. Donating blood is going to be um, a very urgent today. Uh, the New York area hospitals are going to be swamped, and, and New York City itself may not be the place to try to do it. But anywhere in America, if you can donate blood, I think it will be helpful. Now, uh, we are once again trying to uh, find out exactly what happened in western Pennsylvania where a plane went down, a large plane went down just north of the airport, the Somerset County Airport, about 80 miles southeast of Pittsburgh. These live pictures on your screen now show you the, the scene in lower Manhattan where the twin towers of the World Trade Center essentially are gone. We have uh, with us on the phone uh, another former Secretary of Defense, Casper Weinberger. Mr. Weinberger, it's, it's good of you to join us. Thanks very much. Okay, thank you. How, how should, you know how Washington works. What should be happening right now? Well, what? I think probably what is happening, that is the city is virtually shutting down. You see police and little knots in all the corners, and uh, all the police cars are out of the uh, police uh, stations, and uh, every available fire engine is uh, moving toward the Pentagon, and I suppose there are going to be other targets where they'll have to, uh, have to go to, too. These rumors are floating all over the place, and it's... Uh, it's generally a real siege situation. It's uh, it's very much as if the whole city were under under attack. Whereas probably it's a it's the two or three principal targets. But uh, uh, the cumulative effect is that of a, of a city under siege. Have you ever planned for this kind of an attack in, well, in your experience at the Pentagon? The uh, the attempt is, is to plan for everything, and there were always uh, uh, various discussions of uh, uh, what form an attack could take. Uh, most likely, when it was. Uh, was a, a suicide uh, a car bomb uh, or a bus or some uh, heavy vehicle uh, being driven up to the uh, Pentagon, as happened in Beirut and in various other places. Uh, I think an aerial attack was considered uh, uh, not not one of the things you you, you heavily planned against. Uh, on the other hand, the the uh, city is ringed with uh, Air Force uh, bases and Navy bases, and uh, the uh, ability to get the defensive planes in the air is, is very, very high, and at the same time, you, you would do what, what is being done, and that is closing off the entire airspace so that, you, in, in effect, the whole Washington area is a no-fly zone. 
so that any planes that are, can't identify themselves that get into that uh, are uh, to be shot down. And uh, those are the orders. That, that, that was basically the response that was always uh, contemplated, but uh, nothing on this scale was ever contemplated. You know that there are going to be cries for revenge for a response. Oh, Can America course. respond immediately, and if so, how? Well, the, the response has to be a response that is targeted at the people who did it. Uh, but there will undoubtedly be cries for revenge, and it's the slightest uh, uh, confirmation of uh, who did it or where it came from. Uh, the, these will be pursued. The, the, the loss of life has to be absolutely staggering because the, the two twin towers at the Trade Center, uh, there was not time to get them uh, evacuated, and uh, they're both down, and uh, the opportunities... Are, are tremendous now. Of course, they've evacuated the principal targets, the White House and the Capitol building, and and uh, various other points in the in the city. But uh, uh, certainly, there'd be calls for revenge, and and it's important that we that we identify the people who did it and and that they be destroyed as quickly as possible. And that that's a proper response. All right. Secretary uh, Casper Weinberger, former Secretary of Defense, thanks very much for being with us. Just this word, one of our producers in Afghanistan has spoken with the Taliban, the titular government of Pakistan, of Afghanistan, I should say. The Taliban denies any responsibility. Now, that is not to say that the Taliban speaks for Osama bin Laden, but the Taliban, the government or would-be government, not recognized yet by the United States, as the government of Afghanistan is denying any complicity or any responsibility for these attacks. Well, clearly, uh, some terrorist experts that I've spoken to this morning say this has the signature of Osama bin Laden, that he has had uh, pilots, uh, although these apparently may be at least two hijackings, but he has had pilots on his payroll, three of the uh, of, of alleged conspirators who were involved in the East African bombing trial here in New York, uh, had pilot's licenses. Not to say that that's what happened here, uh, but they seem to indicate that this would have that signature. And, John, I'm hearing of a figure of 10,000 uh, here in New York City, perhaps, for, uh, for casualties on the World Trade Center. And it could go higher than that. Britt Hume, our managing editor, is in Washington, D.C. Britt, what are you hearing there? Well, you're seeing, John, that uh, live picture from our station, WTTG, of the, of the smoke and uh, dust still uh, coming from the Pentagon. And what we now understand is the case is in the place where that plane hit, uh, we believe it now to have been a 737 commercial flight coming in, uh, the walls of the build, the wall of the building, the outer wall of the building, and of course that building, as you know, is a series of concentric rings, so that uh, when you hit uh, the outer wall of the building, you're only affecting really that part of it, but that those walls are down, and you can see uh, the gutted areas inside, damage in that part, particular part of that very large building, very extensive indeed. In, in addition, there was an earlier broadcast report here in Washington that there had been a car bomb outside the State Department. Uh, Terry Schultz, our reporter at the State Department, has talked to senior officials who say that that is not true. The State Department has, however, been evacuated, as has the Justice Department, uh, National Monuments, and all other major public buildings in Washington in terms of absolutely non-essential personnel. So you see something approaching now here in Washington, the kind of lockdown that we have now already seen in New York. The, the, the worry for officials, obviously, is that while airplanes have done the great damage so far, they can have no guarantee that that will be the only kind of attack that will be launched. So they have to take seriously uh, any warning, any suspicious package, anything else that they hear that might indicate a further attack of a different kind. All right. Britt Hume in Washington, thanks very much. We have a report that the plane that went down in, uh, the, uh, in western Pennsylvania is a, a 767. That's, of course, a wide-bodied plane capable of carrying upwards of 350 people. Uh, so there is, uh, uh, an, there is a significant amount of the possibility of a significant amount of loss of life. However, it should be pointed out, uh, we are hearing reports that that crash near Pittsburgh may not be related to all of this. As you can imagine, the air traffic control system is, is overloaded, to say the least, at this point. Uh, nationwide, there is a lockdown on, on flights. No new flights have been allowed to take off nationwide for the last two hours. It is an air traffic controller's nightmare to, to keep those planes not only on the, on the ground, but also to get on the ground those planes that had been in the air. And again, you are looking at the pictures of lower Manhattan where the World Trade Center is gone. The Twin Towers slammed into today in a coordinated attack 
by jetliners. We're seeing one of them here on taped replay. This happened about 10 minutes after 9. A jetliner slamming into the World Trade Center after 